Lord, unto you, Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Father, guide, guide me, your worthless servant who deserves nothing of kindness from thee. In Jesus' name. Amen. Get your King James Bible and turn in your King James Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 21 on to verse 31. First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 21 on to verse 31. We read, In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. You have to remember in the book of Acts, when tongues, other languages that were known, not the uh, blah, 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 stuff, none of that garbage nonsense. Okay? When tongues were uttered through the Spirit in the book of Acts, seek for yourselves. Search the scriptures to see if these things are so. You look, every single time when the gift of tongues was present, there was at least one or two Jews present, okay? There was at least one or two Jews present. Beg your pardon, brethren. My computer. Okay, so the gift of of tongues was a sign unto the Jews. And when Peter went to Cornelius and the Holy Ghost came upon those Gentiles, okay, the Jews were like, wow, the Holy Ghost is given on to the Gentiles like it was given on to us. Wow. That's in Acts chapter 10. You go search that on your own time, okay? And then it says here, but prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Today, prophesying is one who is speaking the word of the Lord through the scriptures, okay? Through the book, okay? A prophet foretells of future events. Yes, absolutely. But a prophet is also one who is a mouthpiece of the Lord. And today, in the time of the Gentiles, okay, this dispensation that we are in, there is no new revelation or extra revelation which is contrary to this book, the King James Bible. Everything that the Lord would have us to know of himself is in this book, okay? He's not going to reveal to us things that are contrary to this book, okay? And for one who prophesieth today is one being a mouthpiece of the Lord, speaking the word of the Lord through the scriptures, okay? You got that? Nod your head. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> if 
therefore, we're in verse 23 now, if therefore the whole church be come together into one place, oh, let's, let, let's read that again slowly together. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place. What is the church? Beloved, it is you and I, his body. Be come together into one place, it's not the building. And all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say that ye are mad? Okay? And when you uh, look at verse 22, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. And then when you look in verse 23, and all speak with tongues, are, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say that you're mad? And it's not this blah, 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 jibber jabber stuff. No. Let's continue. Verse 24. But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. What does that mean? Convinced of all. He who is of God heareth God's word, or words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Tell me something, their brother, sister of the Church of the Living God. Have you ever tried to speak to someone through the scriptures, you know, and they call themselves a Christian and you get nowhere but are contrary to everything? But if all prophesy and there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, oh boy, he is judged of all. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This book is the dividing line in many ways. Let's continue. Verse 25 is key to understanding verse 24. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. The secrets of his heart made manifest. Hold your place here and go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Well, there, of course. For the word of God, King James Bible, the real Bible, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow. There's the body. Okay, note that. Soul and spirit. And the joints and marrow. What are joints and marrow a part of? Your physical body. Uh, spirit, soul, and body. Anyone? Hello? And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Go back to 1 Corinthians now. And let's reread verses 24 on to verse 25. But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all. And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God 
and report that God is in you of a truth. A lost individual, when you break out the sword, when you take out the sword of the Spirit, and you start just reading Scripture, the real Scriptures, the King James Bible, the real Bible, you start reading this, note their reaction. Note how they take it. It's a very telling thing. It's a very telling thing. Oh, they will converse with you on subject of theology. I hate that word. Things that are going on in the world. Things of morality. Things of conscience. But you take out this sword and you start reading from this book, the King James Bible, the real Bible. You use one of them fake ones. Oh, well, yeah. You won't see it. But you use this. And thus the secrets of his heart, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, <laughs> hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three. And that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. So, for an example, if the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Lord is that Spirit, if he gave an English-speaking man the gift of the tongue to speak in Swahili, someone who is versed in Swahili or the Holy Ghost may give to someone the gift to interpret the tongue of Swahili. But see, you got to remember, the Jews required a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Jews require a sign, okay? Tongues, known languages, was a sign gift for the Jews. Okay? Okay. Well, why does Paul still talk about it if it's just for the Jews, Brad? Well, you got to remember, brethren, it, it, it was to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? Meaning to the Jew first, then to the Gentile, okay? And Jew and Gentile were mixed together as the church. Okay? As the church, salvifically. Okay? We, we get this, right? Okay, let's continue now. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. Let's read to verse 33. Okay, let's leave to verse, uh, let's read to verse 33. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to, to the prophets. Remember, today in the time of the Gentiles, there are no prophets for telling of future events outside of the finished, perfect word of God. Okay? 
There are no prophets revealing future events outside the perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God, which is revealed and recorded for us in the scriptures. There are no prophets like that today. One can be prophesying, speaking the word of God through the scriptures, the sword of the spirit. Okay? Okay? That ain't happening. And it says, and the spirits, lowercase s, by the way, of the prophets are subject to the prophets, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. And let's, let's touch that very quickly here in 1 Corinthians. Let's touch that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10, on to verse 16. Okay? 1 Corinthians 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verses 10, on to verse 16. Okay? But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, capital S, for the Spirit, capital S, searcheth, searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the lowercase s, spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the capital S, Spirit of God. Now, we have not received the lowercase s, spirit of the world, but the spirit, lowercase s, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing Spiritual things with spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual, brethren. Okay? And uh, go back really quickly. Hold your place there. Back to 1 Corinthians uh, 14, verse 20, uh, 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Verse 13, and first Corinthians chapter 2, which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost, Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, capital S. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Go back now to 1 Corinthians 14. Verses 24 and verse 25 again. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 24 and 25. But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. Hello? Hello? And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. 
For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And very quickly, going back to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Come on, I would, come on, Brad, work with me. I hope you're there already. I'm just fidgeting. With, okay, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. Spirit, soul, and body. It's right there. Soul and spirit, we know that. And the joints and marrow. Body. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Excuse me. Now, had a rough night, uh, a rough homecoming last night when I got home. Very rough. And uh, so rough that it just totally wiped me out. Totally wiped me out. And I went to bed very early. And I was up at midnight, uh, <laughs> or close to midnight. And I had gotten an a email from a beloved uh, brother of mine. And we keep missing each other in uh, phone calls. And hopefully today, July the 3rd, will be the day that we get to speak. <laughs> but, as I went to lay me down to sleep again, this came to me. Isaiah, chapter 1. Go there. Isaiah chapter 1. Need I remind you, Christian, excuse me, Church of the Living God, I sure was convicted about that. And uh, I'm striving really hard, even though I just slipped. I'm striving really hard to not to refer to to the body of Christ as Christian, but as the church of the living God. Okay? You should see it outside your door when you do that. Need I remind you, church of the living God, beg your pardon. Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Okay? You get it? Isaiah, the very first chapter. Now, doctrinally and dispensationally, this is clearly written on to the Jewish people. But I got to read this to you. We're going to read this whole chapter. Can you handle it? Huh? But is this too much? Come on. Get the book. I hope you've been following me along. Isaiah chapter 1 in its entirety. The vision of Isaiah the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord has spoken. 
I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Clearly speaking of the children of Israel. Let's get a little instruction in righteousness, shall we? The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. You know, as the church of the living God, when you sin and mess up, the Lord is going to chasten you. For whom I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And if ye ain't without chastisement, you're a bastard. Meaning, you do not know who your father is. Who your true father is. And no chastisement is pleasant while you're enduring it. I'm paraphrasing. But afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. I get chastised all the time, especially the longer I walk with our Lord. And the chastisement comes quickly these days. <laughs> oh, boy. Praise the Lord. Verse 5. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, where Paul says, uh, Hand this one over unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay. If you are saved and you're not getting chastised, if you are, you might want to put your house in order and go out like a man and go out with clean guts. Because if you are saved, if you truly are saved and born again, and you are choosing to follow the ways of this sagging skin suit. And you've been given over. And you are truly saved. You're going to go out like that? Huh? How about a little decency towards the one who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, who shed his blood on the cross to cleanse you and me from our sins. How about a little decency? Hmm? Let's continue. From the sole of the foot even on to the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers, devour it in your presence. And it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, we should have been like unto Gomorrah, Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams, and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks, or of lambs, or of he-goats. 
The outward expressions are usually vanity of vanities without the conviction and repentance in the heart. It starts here and it bleeds out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out, work out, not working to save yourself. Get it? Let's continue. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand? To tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meaning. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. I'll let you chew on that one. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear you. I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. There's the dispensational difference. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it. But now murderers. Thy silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water. Have you ever had red wine mixed with water? It's terrible. Ugh. Thy princes are rebellious, and companions of thieves. Every one loveth gifts, and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross and take away all thy tin. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Right there is a future prophecy yet to be fulfilled. Because look at Israel, Jerusalem today. I rest my case. Verse 27. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her converts with righteousness. And the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together. More future prophecy. And they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired. Have you ever seen an oak tree? You know what that means, what he means by that, okay? And ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen, that ye have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow, and the maker of it as a spark. And they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them. Oh, one second, one second.
Beg your pardon, brethren, one second. Ah, okay, never mind that. One second, brethren, got a part of that. Sorry about that, brethren, I had to find this. Very quickly, Micah 6, 8. Micah 6, we will re read very quickly, verses 6 on to verse 9, okay? Micah chapter 6, verses 6 on to verse 9. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the, uh, the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The dispensational difference right there. Verse 8, He hath shewed thee, O man. What is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. To walk humbly with thy God. The Lord's voice roareth. The, the Lord's voice crieth unto the city. Excuse me. And the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? Sorry for pausing it like that. I went to the wrong place. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer all spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark, sh dark shadow put to flight. O come, thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show, and cause us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, bind all peoples in one heart and mind. Bid envy, strife, and quarrels cease. Fill all the world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel 
shall come to thee, O Israel. <laughs> Revelation. Chapter 22, verse 16 on to verse 21. Revelation chapter 22, verses 16 on to verse 21. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs>